What is good? All of our listeners, welcome to another set of Games and Groceries. My name is Adam. I'm Liz. And we ate more jelly bellies than our adult bodies can handle. Whoa. I'm actually not sick today. I know, me neither. Yeah, because we learned to control ourselves. After we ate all the jelly bellies. See, we bought for Easter yesterday, we bought like a like a 10 ounce bag of Jelly Bellies, right? Yeah. Nothing too extreme. Yeah. And as we were eating it, I, I, I slowly heard my body like in the background. Stop. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. What was that? No, stop. You can handle five more Jelly Bellies. Please stop. And then after that little handful, I, I looked at Liz like, OK, I need to put these away. Yeah. I was like, yeah, same. Like my tongue started tingling. Yeah. I was like, mm, this isn't good. We're but that didn't stop me from having four cookies later that later in the day. We're children, <laughs> but with adult stomachs, and they did um, the stomachs did not appreciate the amount of jelly bellies that and we. And then we had Chinese food. Then we had Chinese food. It was not a, a healthy day. And then we went to the gym this morning. Yes, we did. Yeah. So Liz, other than that, other than that, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. Hopefully the weather holds out. We can go to our game tonight. Yeah, so we're going to a Phillies game later today. Well, the Phillies at the Mets because we live in Long Island now and we have to represent Philadelphia in different ways. But uh, there's thunderstorms being called. I looked at the weather this morning. I was like, please, no. Like we've been looking forward to this game for months. Yeah, I bought these tickets two or three months ago. Yeah, I think back in February we bought them. Yeah, it was before Bryce Harper signed. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty early. Pretty early. And uh, we've been looking forward to it, and I would really love to go today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be really disappointed if we can't. So, yeah. But <laughs> if you if you live in Long Island, I've gotten the sense that you really can't trust anything the weather that says. Right. <laughs> like it will say that it's in massive downpours, but then it just drizzles. Yeah. So the weather report out here is more volatile than I've ever lived in any other state in my life. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. So. Hopefully we get to watch Bryce Harper uh, murder the Mets today. They have really good seats, and that would be really disappointing to not be able to sit there. Yeah, because that's the thing. We bought our tickets from StubHub, and what happens is if you bought your tickets from the stadium, they'll say, okay, here's your same seats, but in a different day. But with StubHub, it's just, oh, we're just going to refund your money, not the same seats. So rats bananas, but is what it is. Um, But yeah. Phillies, go Phillies! So, and if you're and if you're in the market for a good baseball podcast, by the way, if you love baseball, definitely check out our friend, our our friend, because it's just the one guy. Um, yeah, but the greatest, the greatest show on dirt, uh, podcast, really great baseball analytics, super funny guy. Definitely go check him out. But other than that, let's talk about ourselves for a second. Uh, definitely check us out on Twitter. You can follow us at Gaming Groceries. That's our official uh, Twitter account for this podcast. But if you want to follow us individually, I'm at Ace the Grocer. I'm at Journey First, and I'm working on being more active again. Woohoo! It's actually very strange for me to um, start. I have to retrain my brain to be on Twitter more often. Yeah. Because I was off for so long during tax season. I'm just like, I should be on Twitter. I should go on and I should talk to some people and i should post something like i actually have to tell myself to do these things because i got so out of the flow of doing it yeah and i might not be as active on twitter just because my students are on spring break right now and you know i try to like make sure that they want to hang out or something like that so i might not even be at all on twitter but i want to write at least one article this week at least one article so uh speaking on that right uh, let's go to our website real quick. But before that, follow us on Instagram, Games and Groceries, all one word. That's taken care of. So definitely <laughs> check out our website, gamesandgroceries.com. Uh, I want to write an article on that website, at least one, at least one article per week. Last week, I wrote an article about this new PS5 details, and we're going to talk about it in a second. But if you want to check out that, I wrote the article like detailing why this is really good Mm -hmm. for gaming. What's the future for old school gamers in terms of PS5? So definitely check us check that out on gamesandgrocery.com. You can also listen to all of our episodes from the website. And finally, giving our boy Absolute Prodigy a Twitch streamer, right? Uh, Giving him a shout out. He hasn't been streaming as much because like his workload has been Mm -hmm. like really stressful. But go give him some love. Uh, follow him on the, the streams, the Twitch, 
what all the kids are saying. You know what I'm saying. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And just give him some love on Twitter, too. But <laughs> Absolute Prodigy on Twitch stream. But, yeah, so definitely check out all that. Uh, definitely really, really check out our website because I really want to give you more content on there, uh, writing more blog posts. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's going well. Liz, how you doing? Again. You already asked that. Oh, man. So just look out the window one second. Well, the problem is that we're in our basement and our view out the window is under our deck. So it's yeah. all shaded and shadowy. So we'll have to wait and see when we're done recording what it looks like outside. Yeah. Last time we looked, it was sunny. So before we jump into our first segment, which is always movie minutes, just want to give you a fair warning for next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about Avengers Endgame. We're going to see that opening night on Thursday, and we always do movie minutes. But just want to let you know well in advance, we're going to have a strict 10-minute segment on there. So if you don't want to be spoiled at all, we're going to have a timer. We'll let you know what when the timer starts, and you can just jump ahead 10 minutes, and we'll immediately stop talking about it. Because I know there's some people that just say, eh, I, I don't want to know anything about it. But there's some people who want to know, is it worth seeing? Mm -hmm. So we're going to make that super strict. Just to let you know, we're not going to spoil Endgame for you next week. Yeah. Or we're not going to spoil it at all. But if you don't want to know yeah, anything. Yeah, but if you don't want to know anything about it. Right. So this is a good time to jump into our first segment. Movie Minutes. Movie Minutes is the segment where we talk about the movies that we saw this week, whether it be on Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, or in theaters, or wherever else. And we just want to talk about it, whether we recommend movies or we don't recommend the movie. And this week, since we just got Hulu, thanks to the Spotify Premium that we have, for some reason, with Spotify Premium, they sent me an email saying, oh, you got Hulu? Uh, just just Hulu. You got Hulu. I'm like, okay, cool. So because now that we have Hulu, we want to talk about a Hulu-exclusive movie. Not a Hulu-made movie, but a Hulu-exclusive. Yeah. Uh, it is the movie called Destroyer, which stars Nicole Kidman. Uh, so Liz... Opening thoughts. Um, I was very excited to see this movie. I remember seeing the trailers when we were seeing other movies in theaters. I remember seeing the trailer in the theaters. And I wanted to see it in theater. Yeah. And I thought it looked really, really good. And um, I was excited. It was a little disappointing. It wasn't quite what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of getting angry at trailers lately for doing that to me. I mean, that's like, what they were made for. I know. Yeah. But I just feel like when we were younger, like even like in high school and stuff, they they were still more truthful to what the movie was. Yeah. I don't know. But off anyway. But so I was a little disappointed that it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was still a decent movie. Yeah. Um, But if it wasn't for it has an amazing ending. And if it wasn't for that ending, I think the movie really wouldn't be worth it. Yes. Yeah, so Destroyer is about Nicole Kidman's character being a detective, an undercover cop, and she's trying to solve a mystery in her old age. And then we get to see a little bit more about her past as an undercover detective uh, throughout the movie. This is one of those movies where it actually uses uh, flashbacks to progress the story. And what I appreciate about these, uh, these flashbacks, it actually avoids exposition. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of you just saying you meet a character, Nicole Kidman comes up and she meets a character. Oh, I remember you. You were that drug dealer that I met. So way back when, 20 years ago, when I was uh, smoking Marlboros, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it, it, those those pointless expositions where it's not really natural to the flow of the movie. But instead of doing that, it just gives you a flashback. Yeah. It doesn't really hold your hand to, to have you keep track of the characters. Yeah, there were times where I had to explain some things to Adam. He was like, wait, is that this person? I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm like, that was in the flashback. That's this person. He's like, oh. Well, also because <laughs> the flashback, they used him younger, and then the you get back to the present, and they're much older. I, I think this is like a differential of 20 years, I want to say. Um, Probably 20 years. No, it's oh. 16 because that's oh, okay. how old her daughter is. I was close. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a sixteen year difference. So there's a bit of age going on. So whenever they come back to the new character, I'm just like, wait, 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 was that the same character that did this? So it doesn't really hold your hand, but I appreciate that. I don't like movies that over yeah uh, use over 
like too much exposition. Uh, and it tells her past in a new way where it just seamlessly puts in a flashback to progress yeah. the story. And it's it's really nice. It, it, it flows really well. And the whole flashbacks is the whole theme of the movie. So yeah. definitely uh, keep that in mind. If, if you do decide to watch this, uh, it uses flashbacks a lot. The other thing to keep in mind is that there are some slow sections. And that, and that comes with the territory. Yeah. You know, it comes with the territory with... A movie about character development with flashbacks, the history with uh, detective work, right? Mm -hmm. There, there's some slow sections, but I would say it still keeps you invested in the plot yeah. progression. Yeah. Um, w would you say that there were some slow things that kind of took you out of the story? Yeah, I mean, I remember in the beginning, I was like, "All right, where is this going?" Like after like the first fifteen minutes, I was like, "Where are we going?" Yeah. No, exactly. It was, it's fine. It, it keeps you, it still keeps you invested in the plot. But understand, this is, this is definitely uh, a, de a detective movie where, you know, they come to the scene and they talk about it and they talk about the past and they mm -hmm. talk about the, uh, the, the people involved, yeah. the suspects. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brain. Uh, so there are some slow sections. But as Liz said, the ending was well worth your time. It's a, no, it's less than two hours. Yeah, it was less than two hours. It's a little less, if I remember correctly. But it's it's well worth your time. Yeah. You get to the ending, and you're just... You, sometimes you say, where's this going? You get to the ending, and the ending is well worth your time. Oh, my time. gosh. It's amazing. Like... Yeah. The ending is part of the reason why I rated it, what I ended up rating it. Exactly. It, it would have been lower for me, but once you come to the ending, oh, man. It, yeah. It really puts itself together. Yeah. Uh, it left you, what I wrote down in my notes is that it was well with your time. It left you on good terms and satisfied with the plot. Mm -hmm. It was a good ending. Yeah. Uh, the beginning, the, the first act and the second act were, you know, kind of dry, but they were building up to the mm -hmm. third act. Yeah. And it was well worth your time. So let's go into our final scores. Originally, you gave us an 8.5, but we slept on this a little bit. Yeah. You give it what? I ended up giving it a 7.5. Um, mm. It would have probably been a 6.5 or a 7 um, had it not been for the ending. Yeah. Um, the ending was just so amazing. It needed to be just a little over a good movie. Yeah. Um, so I gave it a 7.5. I had originally given it an 8.5 because, um, because of the ending. Of and the I ending. was like, you know what? It, the ending is not worth bumping it up that much yeah. because the rest of the movie was still um, a little dry. Yeah, a little dry and yeah. predictable. Like I know you got, like I said, you got lost with this, with following the people mm -hmm. a bit, but for me it was very predictable. Yeah, like I was able to say and this, and then it would happen, and this, and then it would happen. Like I knew. I think if I kept a track happen. of who was who, yeah, it would have been predictable for me. Yeah. Uh, so I also gave it a seven, just a seven. And keep in mind that our score, a seven uh, equates to a decent film. Yeah. A seven is a decent film and an eight is a solid film. Mm -hmm. And it just misses the bar for me personally to meet that solid film. Mm -hmm. Maybe a 7.5 because of the ending, but it was a decent film. Yeah. You can put this on Hulu. You can watch it. You'll be satisfied. It'll be fine. But just like Captain Marvel... It's nothing spectacular, but it's nothing terrible. It's just, yeah. it's a decent film. Yeah, and it's, I definitely don't think it's a waste of time. No, th we always rate it like that. Like, yeah. is it a waste of your time? No. It's, no, it's worth it if you rent it at Redbox. It's worth that dollar rental fee. Like, it's worth whatever rental fee that you end up paying for it. Um, but it's free on Hulu, so if you have Hulu, definitely watch it. It's yeah, not a waste of two hours. The other movie I wanted to keep in mind. So as we were going through the Hulu movies, I went to watch Aftermath because I'm a huge Schwarzenegger fan, of course, Arnold. But there, there's there's the movie called Aftermath, and Liz just she's not as big of an Arnold fan as I am. Yeah. So I watched that movie on my own, and that hooked me. So if if you're uh, hearing us out with Destroyer and like ah, I'm not sure, I'm here to recommend Aftermath because it's loosely based on a real story loosely based mm -hmm. uh i i looked into the real story and this is like the full definition of it's loosely based 
it's loosely based on the themes of the real story. Mm -hmm. But basically, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, character, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. Well, actually, it's in, it's in a description. Uh, he finds out his family died in an air crash, but then you also see the life of the, uh, the, the control tower operator's life once those planes crashed, right? And you see the two struggling with different kinds of grief, and you're just like really feeling for these characters. It really locked me in. And it's only an hour and 34 minutes, but it was well worth my time. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for a movie on Hulu, definitely, if, if you're not Destroyer, it doesn't sound like a kind of movie, definitely give Aftermath a try just because it really hooked me in. Um, the last thing I'll say, we have one minute and 40 seconds left. Last thing I'll say in terms of movies before we get into video games, video games. Uh, we watched the Dark Knight trilogy for Easter. We had a movie marathon. One thing I got to say, Tom Hardy has to be the most underrated actor of all time. And what I mean by that is that Tom Hardy doesn't get enough recognition that he does. People like Tom Hardy, mm -hmm. but I feel like his range in characters and, and just the way he uh, plays his characters, it, he's so underrated, right? And, and as we were watching Dark Knight Rises, I was waiting for the scene like, Ah, you merely adopted the darkness. I was born in a darkness, molded by it. My dog is looking at me funny. Yeah, Phil, he doesn't like that voice. Ah, you merely adopted a dog. I was born a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's just looking up at him like, Dad, are you okay? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely check out Aftermath and Destroyer. If you haven't seen Dark Knight yet, what are you doing with your life? But let's just jump into our second segment. Top three gaming news. The top three gaming news is a segment where we talk about uh, the gaming news that happened last week. We rank it three, two, one, just to keep you informed of what's going on in the gaming industry. Just gotta say, this was a weird gaming news because I wanted to say that the gaming news was slow this week, but we had major news. So instead of just getting like little snippets of news here, mm -hmm. the news that we did get was huge, mm -hmm. right? And I had to rank them three, two, one. So this is definitely isn't the biggest news, but it's the news that we found the most interesting. Yeah. Right. So just coming off of movie minutes, let's talk about a TV show casting. Right. We now know that Halo is going to become a Showtime series. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I've been waiting for this since I was a kid. Uh, and we have our Master Chief. And it is Pablo Schreiber, which I was... Uh, I was a bit curious about. I'm going to look him up. I don't know what he looks like. Yeah, so you look up the guy, Pablo Schreiber, and he doesn't really fit the bill. We know him from, we, we know him as Mad Sweeney from American Gods. We also know him from the or, uh, Orange is the New Black and The Brink. But what really won me, and I was looking through his IMDb page, you, you see what he looks like now? Yeah, yeah, I remember him from Orange is the New Black now. Yeah, so... You know his character from from that. And it's just like he's Master Chief. But then I looked through his IMDP page and I completely forgot he played Tonto in 13 hours. And that that was a huge sign for me. So before I get into that, um, he he's playing the Master Chief. And, and we also have another bit of news that we're introduced to a new actor, uh, Yaren Hu, who was announced as Quan Ah who is described as a shrewd 16-year-old who meets the Master Chief after a fatal time in their life. A fatal time in their life. Or a fateful, I'm sorry. Uh, and Halo, aha, this is the news I wanted to, I knew there was something in my notes. I was like, yes. So, big news. Halo will, pre, pre, blah, blah. Halo will begin production this fall in Budapest, Hungary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Budapest, Budapest. See, now we can plan our vacation to Budapest. My family's from Budapest, by the way. That's why I'm so uh, yeah. hi uh, like hyped on Budapest. When I saw that in the news bit, uh, Halo will be begin production in Budapest. Ayo! Yeah, every time I tell people, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want a vacation in Budapest. They're like, that's so random. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but that's where Adam's family is from. And then I looked it up and it's like gorgeous there. Yeah. I want to go so bad. That's why I'm so gorgeous. Yes, it is, dear. Yeah. 
But talking about uh, Pablo Schreiber being in 13 Hours, this gives me a lot of hope because he has a lot of uh, military acting uh, background. Mm -hmm. And I remember his character, he was a little bit goofy in 13 Hours, but he still has that military combative acting uh, in his resume. So it's just a little weird. He has the height to be Master Chief, and he definitely has the background, but I would have to see it to believe it. But I trust this. I trust Showtime. They're, they're a good company. They know how to make really good shows. And this is Halo. They, they know how important the property is. And I'm sure Pablo Schreiber was a Halo fan. Yeah. I'm sure of it. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. But I'm really going to watch that show and just like say like, hey, this is all based in Budapest. Well, it's not we based in. We don't have Showtime. I will get it just for this. Trust me on that. <laughs> Trust me on that, because it's it's going to be filmed in Budapest. It's Halo, and I really want to see what Pablo Schreiber does with this character. Yeah. So, uh, nothing more, much more to say about that. Let's go into the major news. Starting with number two, Microsoft announces... Oh, boy. Let's talk about this one. Microsoft announces the Xbox One S All Digital Edition, along with Game Pass Ultimate. Can I get some oofs in the chat here? <laughs> uh, so during an inside game, uh, inside Xbox, which we were out during this time, I was like, yeah. oh, man, I really want to watch this. But thank God for Twitter, because I can just go on Twitter and find out more. Um, so the sad edition, the S all digital d edition was shown with the same design as the Xbox One S. And they said that they did this just to cut cost of redesign. But it's $250. What's really getting me about this? Now, I, I heard some people saying, like, oh, I was hoping it was $150. I'm like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes there, cheap. Yeah, that's really cheap. I was thinking more in the lines of $200, right? It's so weird. Okay, so if you open up the console, and I've seen a lot of, like, openings of this console, it literally is the One S. It's just the Xbox One S with the disk drive taken out. There's even an eject button that's not usable. There's even the uh, the SATA port, the, the port that you plug into the uh, disk drive, mm -hmm. it's still in the motherboard. It is quite- They li literally just took out the disk drive and put a casing over it without that's it. a hole. That's all it is. You open it up and that's literally all it is. It's just a 1S without the disk drive. That's exactly what it is. And they are, they're charging you $250 with it. Now, it will include Minecraft, Sea of Thieves, and Forza Horizon 3. Not 4, 3. And one month of Xbox Live, and it's going to cost you $250. I'm scratching my head on this just because... Why? Why? Who are you selling this to? Not my thing is, like, you have... PlayStation talking about their next generation. Yeah. And it seems like this is just something that's getting in the way of talking about Xbox's next generation. Like, why are they wasting their time with this? That's the other thing. Talking about the next generation, you would think this this would cost $200 just to get their parts out of here, you know, yeah. just to get it off. And everybody knew that this was an experiment to the all digital age. Yeah. So why is it $250? What I would do instead, if you're just going to just take out the disk drive, mm -hmm. don't include the games. Just package in three months of Game Pass in it. Like, mm -hmm. here's the all digital. Maybe include Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Sure. Uh, not even Sea of Thieves, because that, that will include blah, blah, blah. Just put in Forza Horizon 3. Just put in Forza Horizon 3. Yeah. And then put in three months of Game Pass, so you have all those games just logged in. And that would have been fine. And then charge it for $200. We all know the next generation is coming very soon. Yeah. And it's just wild to me. Like, I understand they might be testing. Because there were those rumors that Xbox was going to put out two separate consoles in the next generation. Yeah. One with the disk drive and one without. But if, I mean, I understand that this is probably like their experiment of saying like, oh, well, is this marketable? But it just seems so random. Yeah. And not well planned or thought out. That right. it's not even worth it. Like, it's so. It, oh, it's it, you might as well just jump into the next generation and see what happens and reassess for the following generation. Like, I just yeah. feel like, 
all right, so make the two separate consoles. If the one isn't selling as well, yeah, then stop selling it. It's stop making it. And it just seems like this is th- this console, the S, is just. It's it's just to it's for me, nobody. It's, it's just like I said, it's just in the way of focusing yeah. on marketing and planning the next their next generation. Like they need to stop focusing on the remakes of this generation and focus yeah. on the next generation. The the last thing I'll say is that they also revealed the Game Pass Ultimate, which is Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass combined uh, for fourteen ninety nine. Like why? Because here's the thing. Okay, so Game Pass is ten dollars per month, mm-hmm. but if you buy a year of Xbox Live, it equals to five dollars a month. So you're basically buying it for the same price, but everybody's saying like, "Oh no, it's cheaper because if you buy Xbox Live monthly, it's nine ninety nine, so it would equal out to twenty dollars a month." But now it's fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, but usually when you bundle something together, the reason why you bundle it together is to cut costs, yeah. right? So I would charge this for twelve ninety nine. You know? Yeah. Like, that would be a little bit of a bargain. Yeah. If it was twelve ninety nine, I would be all game. Like, let's go. Twelve ninety nine. Cool. Yeah. But it's the same price. It's the same price as you buying. So what's the point? Like, I yeah. don't I don't understand. Like, I saw that I saw them reveal the one S all digital edition. I'm like, why? And then they're just like, Game Pass Ultimate for $14.99. And I just said, why? I don't understand you. There, this is not, this is not a good foot into the next generation. Yeah. But people are saying the the next Xbox is really going to blow you out of the water. But talking about blow you out of the water with the next generation, this brings us to our number one mm-hmm. gaming news. And whoa, PS Five is a monster. Yes. Oh my goodness. So Mark Cerny who is the lead architect behind the PS5, the PlayStation 5, uh, has a massive info dump on the PS5, specs and details on Wired. Uh, I'm just going to go through my notes here. The PS5 will include ray tracing, which if you read my article, uh, it's not going to be complete ray tracing. It's going to be underpowered compared to PC Mm -hmm. ray tracing. Keep that in mind. This is on a console. This is a mass-produced Right, there's going to be quote unquote ray tracing, but it's going to be a little bit underpowered. But it's still more than what you're yeah. used to on a console. Right, uh, it's going to have 3D sound, which I'm interested to see. They also said it will be on. Yeah, I'm really stock. curious about that. Yeah, uh, a solid state drive. Thank the Lord, solid state drive here. Uh, an eight core Ryzen Zen 2 CPU and so much more. It's going to be fully backwards compatible with your PS4 uh, games and all and your PS4 headsets. So all of your PS4 games and your PS4 headset will work on the PS5, which is phenomenal, right? Before I get to my last note, I'm looking at this and I looked at this article and I just said, so now you can sell your PS4 to get a PS5 with confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not really attached to your PS4, you can use your PS4 as somewhat of a coupon yeah. for the PS5. Yeah. So let's say, okay, so talking about this, talking about the price a little bit, if you read the article and you're seeing all these parts, and if you t- say to yourself, like Spawnwave did, I'm calling out Spawnwave here. He said the PS5, after reading this article, will be $400. No. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. No. No, it's not going to be $400. Let's look more at the five hundred and fifty dollar mark. Yeah, I'm being nice with five hundred fifty dollars, but if you look at the parts here and the amounts of power they're putting behind this, but then it's based on the same architecture as PS4, so that could cut costs. But let me go into this last quote here. This is coming from Mark Cerny about the price, right? I believe that we will be able to release it, the PS5. I, I believe we will be able to release the PS5 at a suggested retail price that will be appealing to gamers in light of its advanced feature set. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's going to be set at the suggested retail price, whether you like it or not. But much like with the release of the Xbox One S at $500, people didn't really mind just because how powerful the console was. This is 
most likely going to edge that mark into $600, mm -hmm. but you're not going to care because of the because amount of power. Because it's so amazing, and I am so excited. So I'm looking at this, and the fully backwards compatible, compatible excites me the most because now you don't even have to buy a new headset. You will have to buy a new controller. They, they didn't say that's your DualShock 4s. Yeah. So that's no surprise. You're going to have to buy a DualShock yeah, 5. Yeah, but I mean, at least usually when you buy a console, it comes with at least one controller. Exactly. Which for us, we only have one right now. Yeah. So that's fine. So so it was a really interesting read. In fact, I, I wrote a whole article about, and can I say how many times about my article? You want to read my article? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and how this is really exciting for even old school gamers. Yeah. That they're putting in a disk drive. It's going to be compatible with all your PS4 games. You don't have to worry about this all digital age because this seems like uh, Sony is really going after both markets, both the mm -hmm. next generation of gamers and the old generation of gamers. Yeah. This is really exciting. And there's there's been a new... Uh, rumor alert! Oh, there's been a new rumor alert where somebody <laughs> saw this article and they're like, oh, I, wor I work for Microsoft and the Xbox, the next Xbox, it's going to be much better. Uh, mm, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. I'm an Xbox fanboy. I I'm saying that through and through. I'm an Xbox fanboy. But reading this article, I'm shaking. I'm shaking my boots. The, and play the new PlayStation still mine. Oh, I know that. But... If if they're making that claim, and I'm reading all of these parts that they're putting into the PS5, and the fact that they're like killing loading times with this, uh, Xbox is really gonna have to come out swinging yeah. for it to be better than the PS5. Uh, he's down here. The dog is the dog is on the carpet. Oh, oh he's asleep on Adam's foot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You're about to take a photo, yes, aren't you? Yes, I am. So while you take a photograph of that, <laughs> let's just jump into our final segment. Coffee time. So every single week, uh, we, we take something that's going on in the gaming industry, whether it be in the news or just something that we thought of. And we just want to talk about it for the last half hour of the show. Uh, and this week, we're talking about don't be afraid to show your emotions on the hype that you have, mm -hmm. right? And this is coming straight off of the video that uh, the Eric Butts, I love your name, guy. That's awesome. You're an awesome human being. You're but, such a boy. <laughs> but so the Eric Butts uh, uploaded a reaction video about the new Star Wars Episode Nine trailer, mm -hmm. and it was just divisive for some reason. If you just go watch the video, all it is, it's just him watching the video with so much joy that he's crying, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. But there's some people who really, like, combated it, right? Mm -hmm. The people who are just negative in life and just can't take any joy with anything, and they just shut them down. There's this uh, one person on Twitter. I'm not going to name names anymore because this person actually, actually, really good point. This person uh actually something right she's like saying like oh like this is what america's made you know undateable people wearing cargo shorts or whatever tweet she did with uh cory barlog coming in to like defend him but the same person right this is what we love to hear this same person is interviewing the eric butts and they're having conversation about nerd culture and they're coming together with this mm -hmm. this is what america needs people conversation not debates not like he said she said yeah conversation i mean i still don't think that she should have written that post oh no i'm not defending with. her on that one like good but, i'm glad you're having a conversation but clearly you weren't willing to have that conversation when you first saw the video right but at least it's happening yeah that's what i'm happy about but we really want to talk about this in the terms of just don't be afraid to show your emotions with the hype that you have right and i feel like per, uh, people in nerd culture are afraid to be a hype, mm -hmm. both from society and the skepticism mm -hmm. that we have. Because me and Neil watched the trailer for Star Wars Episode Nine, mm -hmm. and, and including uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and because of everything that's happened with uh, microtransactions and disappointing releases, both with movies and games, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're afraid to be like really happy about it. Because we're also skeptical about yeah. it, but also with society. Yeah. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, 
I mean, I do know when we were watching the trailer mm-hmm. um, that we were both like really excited. Like, I am so excited to see this movie. But like yeah. you said, it is, I think, part of that um, excitement is kind of dulled by mm-hmm. the skepticism of, is it going to be just as bad? Yeah. Episode 8 was bad. Don't Episode at me. Episode 8 was bad. And I'm so scared. And that's what I even said that when we were watching. I'm like, I am so excited for this, but I'm so scared it's going to be just as bad because we were so excited for episode eight yeah um and then we were see that's just a, so disappointed that's the thing about episode eight it wasn't horrible I, I wasn't one of those people that just said like like oh i'm so angry no, it, was, it was still good it had very yeah. good scenes i still really love the scenes on the salt planet yeah i love the way and they the did fight that with scene. the yeah yeah with the white and the red i just loved it mm-hmm. it's still a good movie it was just disappointing it wasn't yeah. what i was looking for it was setting up everything jj abrams did and just kind of like squash <laughs> never mind never mind <laughs> um it was just disappointing I think what really killed my hype for games, the the game that really just like set the tone for me for like, nope, games aren't the way they are anymore, was Mass Effect Andromeda. And yes. I was a, I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. Mm-hmm. Love it. Like, and when they announced Mass Effect Andromeda, I was telling everybody I knew, like, mm-hmm. like oh, I'm really excited for this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great and all. Do you know about Mass Effect Andromeda though? Yeah. There was like nothing shown about, like, what's it about? I don't know yet, but it's Mass Effect. I don't yeah, care. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Mass Effect. And then the release came out, or or some people were reviewing it early, and they said, Yeah, don't buy this game. Yeah. And I saw all the glitches and the storytelling was rough and everything about it, and I canceled my pre order. And I think that was the day that really killed my mm-hmm. hype for it, games. It made it hard because then after that point, every time there was a sh- game that you were excited about you just thought yeah it looks great but it could have those bugs yeah. it kind of opened those doors for developers to be like yeah we can release unfinished games with day one patches and all this yeah crap. like they're like oh, we can do that and it kind of opened these floodgates where all the developers are like yes we don't have to push back dates anymore we can just release it as it is yeah. and then fix it and then never fix it and that's the thing, like even with movies, you just watch it and just like all the hype builds up and then you watch the movie and it's just like, Ugh. yeah. And that's what I was talking about earlier, where trailers seem to be lying more than usual. Like, yes, yeah. trailers are meant to get you hyped and pumped. Yeah. But it just seems that recently they're literally all showing all the only two parts of the movie that are exciting. Yeah. And they end up not even being that exciting because they're so far between each other right that like i just feel like trailers these days are hyping up a movie that shouldn't be hyped and like Mm -hmm. i said i understand that's the point that's the point but i feel like before the trailers like the movie still lived up to the trailers but when we were at least even in high school i'm not even saying a long time ago in the 90s or anything i'm saying like in the recent five years yeah that movies were living up to their trailers and just feels like recently like this year and last year Mm -hmm. movies just aren't living up to their hype Mm -mm. and i'm just getting very disappointed in movies lately yeah and and then this guy comes around eric butts and he Mm -hmm. just he doesn't care yeah like and i got jealous of him yeah same like he he was just so emotional about it and just really just in the moment I wish I was like that. I mean, I remember when episode seven came out, uh, Force Awakens, and I I cried. Like I like mm-hmm. I was watching the trailer and I was just so emotional about it. And then everything happened since that movie, right? Like with some disappointing releases in games and movies, and just since Force Awakens, there's been some disappointment. And yet he Eric Butts goes along with the whole ride, and he's still just as emotional. And it's amazing. But when people shut them down, talking about we're in the times of just poor releases and negative feedback, Mm -hmm. right? I have a quote here from Kevin Hart when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He has a really good point where people were shutting down this guy for being Mm -hmm. happy about a release. Kevin Hart says this. Well, he didn't say it about this particular, but keep that in mind. Uh, He says people want to be uh, people want to see the anger. It's just the times. 
that's what's cool now. What's cool now is being negative, mm-hmm. right? And I, I completely agreed with Kevin there. Uh, you know, besides the fact that he's a Philly boy, he went to my uh, rival high school. You know, what up, Kev? How you doing? We're not friends. But he was he was just really honest in that point where that's just the times now. I, yeah. I feel like since 2014 to now, everything has to be followed up with some kind of negativity. Yeah. I, I count myself as a glass half empty kind of guy, mm-hmm. but that's because, you know, I'm a skeptic and I just want to know, like, am I getting myself into something good? Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't count myself as a negative person. Yeah. You know, you see it on Twitter all the time, Liz, where something happens and then every time you show me something on Twitter, like, oh, my goodness, this person. And they just, you just show me a tweet where, like, they can't be just happy about something or they can't just not talk about it yeah like something happens that they disagree with or they don't like and people feel the need to share it why yeah no it's um uh, it's just the times we live in now in fact that's why i'm not we're we're not really political yeah and i don't really follow politics because politics went from boring to toxic yeah and we just avoid even talking to other people about it yeah just because like i don't really feel like getting in a fight with you like yeah we can like you said we can be very um negative thinkers in a way of like Mm -hmm. don't wanting to not wanting to get into things yeah and like thinking that something bad's gonna happen right but as far as like being negative in a toxic way like yeah we just don't like we're t- we're more chill when it comes at stuff like mm. we're just like yeah that's life that's that, it is what it is i say that all the time it is what it is man and it's just it's just become so toxic and people just want to spread this kind of negativity that nobody wants to have a conversation with anybody mm-hmm. unless you also share the same negative opinions right i i still remember and i'll share this like with, with my church we were talking about our easter service and we we just posted it on facebook hey we're a church. We're having an Easter service. Blah blah blah. Yeah, it's it's what churches do. Okay. Yeah. And somebody on Facebook just wrote in like, "Oh, what are you going to talk about? That Easter is actually a pagan holiday. That Jesus didn't really die that day. What book of the Bible are you talking about?" Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And I could tell that this guy wasn't actually asking. It, it's one thing if you actually ask that question. No talk yeah, with like, you. Yeah, like, oh, what are we talking about today? That day, like, yeah. what's the sermon about? Yeah, true, true. But you could tell because then he followed up. With like two minutes after he posted, I could see the time timestamps. Like, come on, say something. And then one minute after that, like, oh, I can tell you're a coward now. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Oh, it's like that meme with like the McDonald's lady. Like, here's the attention you ordered. Yeah. And just like it's one thing to have a conversation. It's another thing that your goal is just to be negative about something. And I remember saying to you, I was like. Are you kidding me with that guy? Because like it's a church's website. Of course we're gonna post something like that. Like you're not po- and you're not commenting on an act on like a person's Facebook yeah. where they're gonna answer you right away. This is a church's Facebook. This isn't someone's number mm-hmm. one priority to be answering you immediately. Yeah. Like Which I just wanna put it on the record here. One minute rants. Yes, I agree that we still like Easter is still celebrated at, like on the pagan holiday with the lunar calendar and it's still called the East like Easter is the pagan holiday that's what yeah, it's that's called Yeah that's the name of the pagan holiday And then we still follow it with the uh, with, with the lunar calendar and we still celebrate the Easter bunny which the bunny was the symbolism of fertility which was what Easter was all about I won't get into the history of that but I, I was with this guy that was just like yeah I I, I get you I, I feel, feel you but you're being a jerk yeah. go away So one minute rant over. But that's the thing. Like, you have to, you just have to be negative now. Yeah. And that's the same thing with hype, you know? Yeah. If you get hype about something like this guy was, right, you have – what what's in it with you that, that you have to be negative? In fact, um, I put up a tweet. I hope I still have the screenshot of um, – oh, it's just StubHub saying, like, oh, you know, we're going to be rained out maybe. Thanks, StubHub. You're great. But I want I want to put up the – the quote that um, Corey Barlog had, who was really awesome with not, not even shutting her down. I don't have, nope, I don't have it. Rats bananas. Oh, well, but he basically said like, is this really what you want to bring to the world? Negativity? Like this is what you want to do. Following up with more of a conversation here. 
uh, talking about negative people, talking about negative hype and uh, skepticism and all this stuff. I, all I want to ask is also what happened to the joy and happiness of video games? What changed in the mm -hmm. times, you know? And I think it's just what Kevin Hart said. The times is now being toxic. The times is yeah. now being negative. Well, I think also with that is that the time of joy was, you have to remember that also the marketing for games changed to changed from young boys yeah. to adult men. So that mm -hmm. is also what changed is that the joy that we used <coughs> that you used to have with video games, the joy that used to surround video games yeah. was because it was the joy of a child yeah. and the joy of a teenage boy, like kids loving video games. Mm. And now that it's seen, now that it's more marketed towards men, you see more adult men playing video games yeah. than you did when we were younger. Mm -hmm. It's people going to these men saying, you're way too old to be playing video games. Yeah. Because in their minds, it's still being marketed to kids and not adults because they don't know anything about the gaming world. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the other negativity that you're seeing is that people's minds don't realize that it's being marketed to the adults now. Yeah. So people are just like, you're too old. So he's too old to be excited about a mm -hmm. Star Wars movie, even Hashtag though undateable. I, I saw that someone followed me the other day and it's in their in their bio is hashtag undateable. I'm like, yes. Yeah. Um, but that's what I mean. Like, it's people not realizing that times have changed and it's OK. Like mm -hmm. that. And with Star Wars, like I, I said, this when we were when you when we were talking about it, um, yeah. when the video came out or the tweet came out, I was like, Star Wars started in the 70s. Yeah. So for an adult to be excited about it is actually okay because yeah. these are people that who have followed childhood. it since the 70s. Yeah. Like, go away. Now, you mentioned that it was originally, and I totally agree with you, by the mm -hmm. way. It was originally marketed to young boys, but now you say it's marketed towards adult men. Would you say that it's less marketed towards adult females? in a way um i do still like i know that there are still like a lot of female gamers like i'm yeah. a female gamer so i know yeah but i still feel that there are like a lot of video games are more marketed towards men i think mm -hmm. they are starting with um when you're able to make a character mm -hmm. that there are more options to make a female character yeah and there are more females in games than we've seen mm -hmm. previously um but yeah i still think that it's still the primary market is still adult men. And that's, I yeah. think, is okay because I do think there are still a lot of male players compared to female. Yeah. Okay, like female players and from what I've experienced. And there's definitely still a good majority. I remember I did a research paper on uh, podcasting and video games. Mm -hmm. and it actually matches the amount of podcast listeners to video game players uh, in the female. Mm -hmm. I believe it was... 41% of gamers are female. Yeah. I think that was it. But the problem is I think we're more closeted than the guys. Yeah. Because, it, yes, it's shameful as an adult male to be a video gamer, mm -hmm. but as an adult female, yeah, that kind of um, backlash is harsh. Like, you are looked down on so much more being a, an adult female mm -hmm. gamer, I feel, than you are as an adult male gamer. I feel like we can let's, – let's talk more about this next week. Let's, yes. let's have that be the topic, yes. you know. Uh, female gamers. So let me actually write that down so I don't forget it. Uh, so keep that. Sorry, in mind. I didn't mean to get off topic. No, 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 no. Because <laughs> um, I think that's a topic that needs more discussion on, and that needs a whole episode. So female gamers next episode. I think we can do that. I, I haven't looked at my calendar. Yeah. But okay. But hopefully. you can look for it in the future. That yeah. will be one of our subjects eventually. Yeah. Uh, so coming back to hype, yes. I know I know there's some females listening to this. Like, like no, no, no. no. Let's keep going. <laughs> But yeah, so I completely agree with you. And um, we'll talk about them more hopefully next week. Um, but coming back to showing your emotions of your hype, I also want to add in that controlling your emotions is important. Like yes. it's so important. I also count myself as a very emotional person in the mm -hmm. way of just like, not in the way of crying, but I make a lot of decisions based on my emotions. Yes, you do. Yeah. I, I'm very grandeur idea, like especially planning the youth group. I'm like, yeah, I, when Adam's excited, he goes crazy. Yeah. But when Adam's sad, he's like, no, forget all this. <laughs> yeah. I based Or when he's angry, he's like, I'm going to go tell him. I'm going to go. I'm like, all right, you need to relax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I control a lot of my emotions and I'm trying to learn to control my emotions more. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, controlling your emotions is very important. However, 
holding back all of your emotions is super unhealthy. Oh, yeah. So if you're going about life like, oh, man, I'm not going to show my hype about this game. I'm not going to show how excited I am for this game or that game. That's not healthy. If you're excited about a game, yes, don't go about it like I did with Mass Effect Andromeda. If you <laughs> saw me with Mass Effect Andromeda, like eh, I'm, I'm telling you right now, everybody that I talked to knew about Mass Effect Andromeda. Every, every single conversation I had, I tried to bring it back to Mass Effect. It's like, yeah, yeah, Kind so. of like how he was with 76 before he realized that was terrible. Oh, man. Mm, that was a mistake. <laughs> I actually got rid of my Fallout 76 shirt just because it's such a soft shirt, but it just can't represent that game. I just can't get into it. We'll I find you a new soft shirt. Yeah. But th that's the thing, though. It's just I, I was very emotional about both of those games because I love Fallout mm -hmm. and I love Mass Effect. It's like they, they never let us down before. They, OK, yes, Fallout 4 was a little bit of a disappointment. I get it. But they'll never, they'll, they won't let us down again. Oh, <laughs> But yeah, but holding back all of your emotions, like I, I'm excited about Jedi Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just saying, oh, you know, hold your hype, hold this. I'm excited for Jedi Fallen Order. I really want that game. That that game seems like it's for me. Same thing with Starfield. We don't know nothing about Starfield. We're not going to know anything this year. And I'm still really excited for mm -hmm. Starfield. It's fine. Like, don't don't hold it back. Like saying like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not excited about any game. Because then how are you going to be excited when mm -hmm. you get the game? How, yeah. how are you going to enjoy the game if you're not excited for it ever, right? So I definitely think that definitely temper your expectations, right? Especially with the PS5. So I, I also wrote this in my article. Did I mention that <laughs> I wrote an article about PS5? Um, but I, I also said to temper your expectations about the ray tracing because people are going to see that and say, Oh, it can handle ray tracing. Whoa, whoa, pump the brakes. Yeah, be excited that it's going to support ray tracing, but it's going to be nothing compared to PC mm -hmm. ray tracing. It's nothing going to be compared to Hollywood's ray tracing. It's yeah. going to be in a console, mass produced, and it's going to be sold cheaper. So temper your expectations about the ray tracing. But still be excited about ray tracing. Still be excited. That, like, wow, look how pretty everything's going to look. So I think it's just a balance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it's okay to be excited, but yeah, there are some things that maybe don't get... It's more of, you can be excited, but just don't get your hopes up. Right. It's more of on that and not like manage your excitement, but it's more more of manage your expectations. Right. No, that that's... Manager, and, and that's just a hard balance because I'm telling you not to be hype and be hype yeah. at the same time. But all I want to say is that it's okay if you want to be that excited. Yeah. Like that guy crying, it's okay. Yeah, fine. Like I, I can't High remember five. the last time I was that excited about something and I'm so jealous I have not been that excited about something. Yeah. So like if you have the capacity to be that excited about something, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah, and... But but the other note I have here, and this is this is going on me as well, right? The reason why you should control your emotions, like yeah, when, when that trailer first drops, yeah, but like fall yeah. outs, like I don't I don't really care. High five for you. <laughs> um, but also this goes for me too. Hype can keep you misinformed about the game. Hype can keep you oh, so yeah. misinformed about the game. This is talking about Cause, yeah, because you'll start denying any bad things that come out. Yeah, talking about I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> talking about Fallout 76 for a second. That hype get me so misinformed about Fallout 76 to the point where um I saw the things that were happening and there was YouTubers warning us like no, it's not going to be bad. You can listen to earlier episodes of this podcast and I was like Fallout 76 is coming. It's going to happen. I I made sure to have Fallout 76 in every single episode. And then more gameplay was released. I'm like, it's still good. It's fine. It's still good. It's like that Simpsons episode with the flying pig. And uh, it was a roast pig. And it was going through the sewer. And it's like, oh, no, it's just a little slimy. It's still good. It's still good. And then uh, it's shot into the air. Like, it's just a little airborne. It's still good. It's still good. And I, th and I think that was happening with Fallout 76 for me, where mm -hmm. my hype for the game was just saying like, no, no, I, I, there's there's some glitches here. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, the frame rates dropped for no apparent reason. It's so good. 
oh, it's it's being developed by Bethesda's newest uh, studio that that failed at another multiplayer game. It's so good. It's so good. It's so it's it's fine. But that's the thing. Um, you know, skit aside here. <laughs> Uh, I think if you're overhyped about a game, it will keep you misinformed about mm-hmm. a game. And if you don't lower your expectations, your your expectations won't be met, right? Uh, yeah. You said that happened to you before. In, in what way? Um, I don't remember. It was probably about a movie. Um, yeah. But there have just been times where I get so excited about stuff and... I just like no, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Yeah, it's all good. And I know you can't. You remember me doing things like that? Oh, yeah, totally. I just can't remember. Yeah. Any examples? Probably TV shows. Yeah. Where like I want a certain ending, and you're like, babe, they already announced that that's not gonna happen. I'm like, I don't care. It's gonna happen. They're lying. Yeah. Like I deny it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> like same thing with Endgame. You know, I I want to be so hyped for it. But I'm so scared. I know. Like. I'm lowering my expectations for that so that I can go in just like extra like yeah like wow yeah we're going in with expectations very low cuz yeah. I think we went in to um the in- last one I can't remember Infinity War Yes we went into Infinity War with our expectations too high Yeah and we were kind of disappointed with it at first because expectations won't be met if you're Exactly if you put them too high they're not going to be met so we're going into end game with pretty low expectations if if at all any expectation yeah i'm just like it's a movie let's let's go into yeah. it yeah so yeah we'll see the same thing with star wars episode nine i'm going into it like listen okay jj abrams is back on the helm it's fine it's okay it's a good it, it's, <laughs> it's okay it's just a little it's gonna slimy be okay <laughs> but yeah, I, I think to have none to low expectations about something will have you even more hype yeah. about it, right? But that's the thing. The last note I have on my on my notes huh, um, is that I just want to end this episode just to say that Eric, the Eric Butts, right, is super inspirational, right? He watched Star Wars Episode Nine, the the teaser trailer, with. Uh, without questions, he was just watching it with tears of joy, and he yeah, was just like super with such happy. purity. Yeah, and that's the thing—he didn't care that what people would say or uh, or how it would be taken. Right? He's actually um, taking it all in. I, I think on his Twitter, his header is just saying like, "Just take in this 15 minutes of fame." So he's he's accepting he's accepting that people aren't really understanding, and and that's the that's the best part about it all. You yeah. know, is that. He doesn't care what people are saying or what people are thinking about all of this. He's just watching Star Wars Episode Nine with yeah. the blinders on, saying, like, I'm happy that there's going to be a new Star Wars coming out. Yeah. And it looks awesome, and I can't wait for it. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely temper your expectations. Definitely temper your hype. But also, don't be afraid to show the emotions. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be excited. Yeah. And that's the thing. Um... Now, I show joy in a different kind of way than other people. I don't cry during trailers, mm-hmm. but I get over emotional about it. I'm like, it's like, going to be good. I get excited when I'm there. Like, I remember when we went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. And I got the baby group head. And I was like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Baby group head. And then I like took pictures. I was so excited. Like, I, was, I'm, I get super excited once I'm there. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been excited for our Phillies game today. But when I'm there, I'm going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. We're seeing the Phillies. We're here. Yeah. The... It's, we're going to watch it today. It's not going to be canceled. It's not going to rain. We're going to see the Phillies today and really, really good seats. And I'm going to have a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't even read that text. So I'll have to read it after we're done recording. But it pretty much said, like, uh, temper your expectations. It might rain. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think this is a good way to end our episode today. Yeah. So we thank you again for listening to this week's episode. I I think we can still talk about female gamers. I know that we have some episodes planned out already, but next we'll, week. We'll squeeze it in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we really, I think this is a good topic to talk about, you know, female gamers and, like, does does the market actually go for female gamers? Right. Go Lizzie. Go Lizzie. Because I can't talk about it, because. Well, no, I mean I'm the one that thought of it. Well, I, I, it oh up. yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like it will be just Liz next week. <laughs> just ranting. <laughs> just ranting. Like <laughs> there need to be more female games out there, like Captain Marvel game. That would be cool. Oh. Eh. 
So we want to end this episode just to remind you to follow us on Twitter at Gaming Groceries. That's the official Twitter account of our podcast. Uh, you can follow us individually. I'm at Ace the Grocer. I'm at Journey First. So you can follow us there individually. Make friends with us. Talk with us. We love talking with you. Uh, she has way more followers than I do. So please. Yeah, be... but none of them talk to me. So please talk so to talk me. To... Talk to me. I don't. You talk all the time. Yeah, but everybody wants to talk to our dog, though. I can do that. Oh, yeah, true. Um, and follow us on Instagram, Games and Groceries, all one word. You can also follow, um, go on our website uh, where you can read. Uh, I, you could go on some oh, articles. Oh, my goodness. Where I wrote an article on PS5, <laughs> gamesandgroceries.com. You can listen to all of our episodes from the website. Uh, I want to write an article at least once a week. This week, I might not get to it. I'm so sorry for that. But I'm, but I'm going to do my best to write an article this week. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out our website. I think that's all the announcements we have. Oh, final announcement. Last week, we interviewed Dan from the Greatest Story Ever Played podcast. So if you're interested in that, uh, after you're done listening to this week's episode, which you are because you're at the end game right now, uh, definitely check out definitely check out Dan's interview. We, we asked him... Uh, we, we asked him what's his favorite Harry Potter movie, which you'll be shocked at his answer. Yeah. Clickbait. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So that's this week's. We hope to see you again or hope that you listen to us again because I don't see you. Anyway. We hope to have you back next week. We thank you very much. Have a good week. 